Hello everyone, I trust you are all as well as can be. Welcome to Frontline Systems webinar on data mining using the power of analytic solver plus reason. My name is Dr. Seema Maliki and I would like to thank you for joining us in this virtual gathering to briefly talk about and share some of the possibilities that Frontline Systems software offers to train and evaluate your machine learning models and create uh, multi-stage workflows and easily deploy them as cloud services. The presentation usually takes about 40 to 45 minutes. After that, you're welcome during the, this, uh, the whole webinar to type in your questions in the chat box, go to webinar chat box, and I will try to answer them by end of the webinar. So today I attend is a mix of uh, people who are new to our products and some of the people who have uh, used our products before. So hopefully there would be something useful for all of you. Feel free to type in your uh, questions or any recommendations you have. I also enclose a handout for you. So feel free to download Analytic Solver Plus Raison product brief written by Frontline System President Dan Feilstra very well written and very useful to give you a better view of everything. So here's the plan for today's webinar. We are going to start with a brief overview of tools available to you with analytic solver desktop and cloud when it comes to data mining and machine learning. And uh, remember that once you have a license for analytic solver desktop, you also can use that license for the analytic solver cloud. For example, you can go to Office 365 Excel online and access analytic solver from convenience of your browser anywhere, anytime you want. Just log into your user and password and check it out. Okay. After that, we're going to look at some supervised learning algorithms that are available in uh, our products and we will create a data science workflow together. There are multiple ways to do that, and I will show them uh, to you. Once we create a data mining workflow, we will learn how we can share the results of our model with other people. This is called model deployment, so we'll spend a few minutes on model deployment, and we learn how we can deploy machine learning workflows to Azure Cloud to run them as cloud services using Analytic Solver Plus Raison. Raison is another product of frontline systems. After that, as time allows, we move beyond what we can do in Excel and uh, Raison and show you some more applications. So here in this uh, uh, slide, I have a picture of Analytic Solver as our authoring tool on the left side and a picture of Raison.com on the right hand side. So basically, you're looking at Raison through a front end portal, which is at Raison.com. We will learn more about this, that uh, the front end portal Raison in the background connects to a REST API service that can be used by any application. For example, if you want to have a mobile application or um, web application, you need to access a cloud, uh, cloud service and we provide that service for you with Raison, okay? So again, in summary, Raison.com that you will learn more about is an application using a backend server at Raison.net, which exposes a REST API and allows any other application pretty much to perform in general optimization, analyze and solve optimization model, fit a train model, perform machine learning, invoke a train model to score new data and much more. Okay, so let's uh, start our presentation for today's webinar. So these are general data mining steps. I don't want to spend your time talking about this. So if you want these slides, I'm going to share them with you. But any data set that we will be using today are already shaped and cleaned. So, uh, but if you have a data that you haven't worked with, you need to do a lot of cleaning and shaping and understanding of your data. Analytic Solver also features uh, unsupervised and supervised learning uh, machine learning methods, okay? 
so unsupervised learning algorithms include the clustering algorithms, principal components, and association rules. And then we also have supervised learning algorithms, including prediction and classification algorithms. So let's open uh, a blank analytic solver. So let me go to file and new Excel workbook. So here's the analytic solver ribbon. And then you have the data mining ribbon, which is the focus of today's webinar, except for deployment that will go back to analytic solver. So let's walk through the ribbon together. Clicking on the model tab, so I'm starting in the top left, displays or hides the task pane. You have get data that allows you to bring in a statistically representative sample of data to Excel. You can work with different databases such as Microsoft Access, SQL Server, Oracle, Power Pivot, and you could also bring use file folder to bring text data samples for the, for uh, text mining. Okay, so it's very easy to just uh, uh, work with get importing text files. For example, I have some of the text files installed like autos and electronics. Just choose all files and if for example I choose all of them and click open I can move them to the right with this button so it's very simple just like sampling from regular uh, files so choose that moves everything to the right now you have two options you can get import all of the text files or you can actually sample from text files so let's click on sample Okay, sample size 255, that's fine. You have two options to write file path or you can write file content. I want to write file content to show you that what is in the content of these files. As time allows, I can show you example of text mining today. Okay, so here is uh, the sampling from the text file. So here are the path where the folder sits. And on the right is actually the text content. So there is a limit on the characters. If uh, it passes a certain limit, you should uh, it just writes the uh, they have to get the path. But here we can just use both of them, okay? And these are the sampling parameters. So pretty straightforward, okay? Next, you can also work with our Apache Spark Big Data Clusters, get a sample, work with these data. Next is data analysis. In data analysis, you are equipped to explore, which allows you to access chart wizard. We have eight different types of charts from simple bar and line charts to scatter plot and scatter plot matrices. You can easily export to Power BI in Tableau. Our products generally work greatly with these two products. So let me quickly show you an example of a visualization. You can easily click on help on the top to access example models. And let's go to forecasting data mining examples. You can see we have example folders for each of the analytics software capability and analytics software features and tools that are available to you. So let's click on forecasting data mining. And we can actually open one data set that we're going to use later today. And let's use it for visualization. So let's click on data mining. Anytime you want to work with any of the algorithms, select a cell within the data and analytics solver data mining automatically recognizes the border of data. So let's select the cell within the data, go to uh, explore chart wizard. So you can use bar chart, line chart. I'm going to show you his uh, scatter plot matrix. Click next. Now we have to select variables in this dialog. So choose all of them or some of them and click on finish. Here is your scatter plot matrix. You can see that on the diagonal, I have histograms on either side, I have the scatter plot matrices. Some of the cool things I want to share you, you can color by your categorical variables. So there's an option on the top right, okay? So if you have a categorical variable, you can color by the categorical variable. Or if you want to, for example, zoom in and find out what are these two observations, just you can select them with the cursor and they immediately turn red, not only in this chart, but in all other charts, okay? And then you can look to the right for information about individual records. There are other filters available to you if you're interested. So, 
let's see on the top right are these filters are available to you and you can feel free to use them once Okay, so uh, adding it another uh, option is easy. On the top, you can add any of the other charts, for example, histogram, let's do histogram quickly. And you can choose, for example, any of the continuous variables, get a frequency, I'm gonna click on finish. And here you can choose which would choose the variable and change it. You can change the bin size and you can change frequency to like other options that are available. And you can see this is a cross check because of those red variables that I selected. If I click on the chart that actually goes away or if I choose another one, it chooses it here too, which is very cool. Okay, change the bin size and from frequency, we can go to cumulative frequency. Okay, when you save the chart, give it a name, for example, chart one and then save it. To access your existing charts, go to explore existing chart, chart one. Okay. Okay, back to uh, clustering algorithms, two different clustering methods available. Text mining is available. Uh, I already showed you how to get a sample of text files. And then here is time series methods. So if you have time series data with a time variable and a quantitative variable that usually collected in equal, uh, equal time intervals, for example, number of passengers uh, purchasing, uh, arriving at the uh, airport for a certain flights, right? A per each, if you have recorded that in for each flight uh, or if you have recorded that every month, like total passengers travel from San Francisco to Atlanta, Georgia. Then this is a, a time series data set, right? We have a time variable, we have a quantitative variable. Now, what can we do? Partitioning with for time series variable is different because you can't get a random, uh, because there's a time dependency, you can't just get a random sample. So basically that that's why you see two partitioning options available here, partitioning for time series and partitioning for just regular data sets. So this one for time series, it just uh, uh, will have, breaks the data to two different uh, data sets, just uh, crosses the line somewhere in the data and then it divides one part as the uh, for training and one part for uh, evaluation, okay? But this one is just random, they do does that for you. And you have other options to check. For example, you can look at standard partition or partition with oversampling. So with time series, you have ARIMA methods, lag analysis, ARIMA models, and also you have a smoothing techniques from exponential to moving average to whole pointers, okay? So if you wanna look at the time series data sets, uh, go to example models from help, Forecasting data mining, uh, that is, let's see, air passengers. Do you see airline? Air passengers, okay. So these are number of travel, pass that number of passengers travel each month from 1949 to some like other year, 1960. Okay, so it's an old data set, of course. So uh, let me show you very quickly. Let's first do the do a chart wizard together to learn more about this data set. Let's do a scatter plot, passengers. I choose passengers for the y-axis and then months for x-axis. Let's see, how does it look? Actually, I think line would be nicer. Okay, there you go. Okay, it's a pretty nice line chart. Okay, so look at the trend in this state. So there is a strong upward trend and also there's a seasonal pattern. So you can see how visualization quickly can help us learn more about this data set. Okay, I mean, we could see this in the scatter plot too, but I mean, it's much nicer in the uh, line chart. Okay, so. Charting can be useful very quickly, you can learn more about this data set. So a strong upward trend and a seasonal pattern, 
which makes sense for uh, time search data set about uh, airline passengers, okay? Now, uh, very easily, you can quickly work with the smoothing technique if you want to do some forecasting. And there are different options, no trend, additive, or multiplicative, but because we know we have the uh, a strong upward trend and the seasonal pattern multiplicative would be the right choice. Also, I show you partitioning with time series. Uh, you can see we have a time variable, so you have to select that separately. So let's do that. Months is our time variable. Passenger is our only variable that you can choose in our dialog to move to variables in the partition data. You have options for 60% 60 per, uh, 60 training and 40% validation. Uh, the default parameters, let's accept that. And here it is. This is the partition time series data set. Okay, now from here, doing one of the smoothing techniques pretty easy. You can use a multiplicative model method, for example. Uh, use, make sure you're using the correct worksheet. We're using the partition data set. And you can move passengers to selected variable. Months is our time variable. For this data set, I think periods are 12, so seven seasons, because I think each month. And then you can optimize the weights or accept the defaults. You can produce forecast on validation. And if you click OK, here are the results. You get some really nice training and validation, visualizations. OK, here's the forecasts. You can see the plots are pretty good, showing that training data fit pretty good and validation also pretty close, okay? Then if you use, for example, a smoothing with, uh, with no trend, then you will see that how different it is and it does not see the strong upward trend. And here are some of the outcomes, for example, the different error measures that are presented to you, including SSC, MSC, and much more. And also you can see the fitted model and also the forecasted model, okay? So feel free, work with our... Uh, Halt winter, and this is the PMML model. What is PMML model? This is the train model with all the fitted parameters. This is expressed in predicted modeling markup language. This is something you can export and use in other software, or also you can share with other people. So in the next example, we are going to do more with the PMML model, and I will show you how you can save it on the local machine and also how you can share it in a way using Grace on cloud service in a way that actually can be used in any other application. Okay, back to the ribbon. So we talked about time series. Where is the wine data set I opened? Okay, here's the wine data set back here. So uh, we are on data mining group. Uh, we talked about the partitioning options that are available, standard and is partitioning with oversampling, classification algorithm, if your output of interest is uh, categorical, you can use a classification algorithm. We have find best model for you, discriminant analysis, logistic regression, K nearest neighbor, classification tree, naive base, neural networks. They're available both in automatic or you can choose your network manually. Also, we present ensemble methods, bagging, boosting, and random trees which usually are more powerful than using a single classification tree or single uh, uh, classification algorithm, okay? We will talk about ensemble methods. Next is prediction. So you have, again, the option of finding best model for your data, which is really amazing. Linear regression, k-nearest neighbor, regression tree, neural networks, and ensembles of all these algorithms, okay? Association rules available to you, scoring your new data using that PMML model. If you save that, that's one way. Checking your license and clicking on the help. I did that a couple of times today already, but I wanna point to you that there are user guides with a lot of information, including data mining user guide and reference slide, really well written, talking about all the algorithms. Sorry, one second. For that, I'm doing a sneeze. Okay. 
then we have example models again you know from example models how you can go to different categories and then training and education i want to point you to solver academy uh, if you're interested to learn more about data mining optimization and simulation the course is available to you okay and on the right side the task pane let's talk about task pane and we can work on examples for the rest of the webinar so model tab platform tab these are platforms usually used more for optimization and simulation including engine tab so i would uh, skip to workflow workflow this is the we will spend some time today learn about how to create a workflow for data mining algorithms and then uh, next to that is tools again for uh, optimization and simulation okay so we'll come back to workflow in a few minutes Okay, we have this uh, data set available, wine data set, and it has information about wine samples, including 13 variables that describe different properties of wine from three vineyards. Our goal is to assign a wine classification to each record. So we are going to build a classifier model which would automatically look at this data and fits a model to indicate which vineyard the wine come from come from the wine comes from so in the future if you get a sample and you don't know which uh, vineyard it belongs to you can use the score a button on the ribbon and find out based on the pmml model uh, the fitted model parameters okay this sample belongs to vineyard a b or c so we are going to use a machine learning model and we want to evaluate its performance and the outcome here that we are going, our goal is to predict the outcome, right? Based on a set of features. So we are, our goal is to predict the wine uh, vineyard based on a set of features, which are wine, uh, wine features, right? Different properties of wine. So we are doing a supervised learning algorithm and our outcome is discrete categorical variable type, right? It's a wine vineyard type, A, B, and C are three different values. So it is categorical. And then for, we're going to use a classification algorithm to predict this uh, outcome based on the set of features of wine. Okay. So select the cell within the data. I want to show you there is a partition on the ribbon options, uh, the option that you can use during the algorithm. So you can either start with the partition in first or use the partition on the fly. Select the cell within the data, click on classify, and I'm going to use classification tree because it has nice visualization. Here is the first dialog. So what are the variables? What is the output variable? That's what you need to do. So type is the vineyard type that goes to output variable. All the other variables, they all go to selected variable. They're all continuous. So if they were categorical, you move them to categorical group. Now you can always look at the lower section to make sure everything has been done correctly. Number of classes three, which is correct. We have three vineyard types. Let's click on next to go to the next, next dialog. You could also click on these options on the top instead of clicking on next or back button. So first group of options are pre-processing. You can see that you have partitioning data options and rescaling data options. So click on partitioning data, check this box to activate partitioning. If you start with the partition data, actually this will be grayed out. It will not give you the option to choose. So it makes sense. You have a partitioning option, partition variable, or just do the random partitioning for training validation, 60% and 40%. You, if you want, you could also have the test file, okay? And click OK. Next is rescaling data. If you're interested, you can use a different types of uh, rescaling, standardization, normalization, and much more. Unit norm and much more. Once you use like normalization or unit norm, it also gives you different norm type. I'm going to skip this, uh, skip that. Now, the next group are decision tree fitting. You can tree, limit the tree growth and use advanced prior probabilities option. Next is decision tree model. You can prune the tree using validation set. You can choose a tree for scoring. You can display a tree. You can show the feature importance. 
maximum number of tree levels default is seven and we can display the fully grown tree and next is the scoring options so there are different ways of scoring your new data that you don't know whether it belongs to vineyard a b or c you can score during the algorithm you can see that you have a score new data in a worksheet you have a score in a database or you can later use the score option on the ribbon so we get this question a lot about the scoring so just wanted to point you to how you can do that and you get some uh, ways to evaluate the performance i'm just going to get the summary report you can explore the detailed report later and it also have some visualizations some of uh, sometimes roc or roc curves let's click on finish and here are the results for classification tree algorithm pretty quick this is the output navigator easily takes you to different sections of this report fully grown tree rules let's click on that it shows you the rules in a table format also in a visualization graph very easy to read hover over each node for example this decision node is proline and it tells you go left is proline is less than 730 let's go right proline is seven greater than 730 now if this one sample has a total phenol of greater than 2.05 it belongs to vineyard A. And you can read the rules also in the format of a table. Next is feature importance, okay? Gives you the feature importance. I have more to tell you about feature importance, but uh, let's go to, again, you have the PMML model, the train model with all the fitted parameters. I will come back to this model. Now, how do we evaluate the performance? So here in the summary, we have the confusion matrix confusion matrix displays counts for, for cases that were correctly and incorrectly classified in the training and validation data sets very easy to read actual versus predicted and then it calculates the error for you so this is the training data that was used to fit the model uh, error is zero okay that's fine we understand that this is good but really what we need to look at is the validation data set that was used to evaluate the performance of the model so you can see that total of 10 cases were misclassified in the validation data resulting in a person error of 14.08 it also gives you the matrix for accuracy uh, in percentage and based on number of correct cases okay so this is one way of evaluating the performance and again you can look at the graphs and much more let's go back to uh okay let's use the correct way use the output navigator go to pmml model so pmml model i told you that you can actually save it on local as a local file in your machine or there's much more you can do because we have the deployment option so let's first save it as a local file let's click on analytic solver on the ribbon deploy model so imagine you have confidential data you have trained a model you want to use the model for your mobile application or web application but you don't want to uh, share all the data so it's useful to have a model in a format that can be used in other applications so go to quick test on the deploy option so i clicked on deploy model group an analytic solver and this is how you save the model on a local machine quick test and then fitted model okay click on that you can give it a name uh, like wine let's put 6.22.22 and choose a fitted model where it is it is stored which rows and then click on save here is my folder and you can give it a name uh, 62222 click on save now i have to let me pause the screen and open the wine folder where i where i saved it and then bring it all in Okay, let's uh, resume. Okay, here is a 6.22.22 where I saved it in my webinar folder. It's a PMML file. Double click, open it. This is a, a JSON syntax, okay? It's saved for you. So you can actually use this uh, PMML model, train model with all the fitted parameters. 
in ex expressing predicted mark, uh, modeling markup language, and you can export it and uh, use it, share it with other people. Now, yes, I um, I I think I for a second I said this in JSON syntax actually in PMMN model language, right? It's in predicted predicted modeling markup language. I think by mistake I said uh, Razor. Okay, now. What if you want to use this in uh, another application? So there is other options available. Click on deploy model for now. I just want to show you, you can click on cloud service and then click on fitted model. So this will actually post your model to your Raison account. So we are going out of Excel and we are actually saving the model to cloud. There will be an account under your name uh, on Raison. Raison is another product of frontline system. I showed you a screenshot of it, the reason.com, and in the back end, it works with that server. So basically, we are promoting this PMM model to sit on Raison server. Okay, so it's going to save it for us, maintain it, and then allows us to run and use it. Okay, in the cloud. So let's see how it works. Click on cloud service, fitted model. Same way, model name one, select the fitted model here. Let's put the date uh, 6 Save. Few things happen. Automatically, raison.com would open up, and here is the model, the PMMN model. Now it is promoted, and it sits on Raison Cloud Service. And you can make it available to other people and other application, but it is sitting on a cloud instead of on your local machine. Okay. This is raison.com. Let me give you a quick tour. So I have a raison.com. Uh, I have an account that uh, these are all the models I, that I have sitting on the server. Okay, on the left side. This is, mod, uh, this is the PMMN model that we just posted. Down here, you can see how the communication with the backend server is happening. Okay, we are doing all, everything automatically for you. So everything happened and we just see a copy of it right here. So it allows us to manage and communicate with the backend server. There are other applications you can use that you can communicate with the backend server, but we created this application, raison.com, that make to make things very easy for uh, our users. Okay, back to Excel. So we learn how we can share the results of our PMM model, uh, the fitted model with other people, two different ways, locally or you putting it on a, a, a promoting it to sit on uh, Raison Cloud service. And we looked at the validation and uh, training confusion matrices. Now let's learn how we can do all of this, but through creating a workflow. Okay, so back to data. So workflow allows you to create a workflow of your uh, algorithms that you want to compare, for example, with each other. And it's really easy to build mul compare multiple algorithms together, then change the data and use the workflow, okay? So here's the data. And creating a workflow, there are two ways to do it. One is the manual option. So in the manual option, you can, uh, that I will going, I'm going to show you. And uh, there's also the automatic option. So you can click on the record option here and it and then perform different algorithms and it will actually record all options for you, okay? So well, think very logically. If you want to create a workflow and compare two different algorithms, I'm going to use this simple classification with an ensemble of classification tree, okay? So get data. So the focus is not on the algorithm, the focus on learning to create the workflow. What is first? Where is my data? Okay, so let's click on get data, first option, and then drag and drop new. So this is source data. It's in this workbook data uh, worksheet. Data range, and then click OK. Next, I want to do partitioning perform partitioning and then use the same partition outcome for different algorithms. So let's use standard partition, drag and drop. Now we want to make sure we are using 
the correct worksheet. So this is still on data, but I want to use the partitioning. STD partition. Oh, we are using the data. Sorry about that. This, I thought we are using for the algorithm. So a standard partition using the data worksheet, let's choose all the variables. Move them to selected variable. 60% training and 40% validation. So everything was right. Click OK. Now you can see that they are connected to each other automatically, showing us that we have done everything correctly, pointing to source data, and then using standard partition. You can use format workflow to move everything. Also, I kind of liked it in the middle there. Next, let's compare different algorithms. So first I'm going to use the, let's go to classify, drag and drop classification tree, drag, drop it here. Make sure we are using the partition outcome. So again, uses data. Now in this step, we have to point to partition outcome, a city partition. Now type is our output variable and all other variables. Go to selected variable and let's click on next. See, partition option is not, not available and click on finish. This is the algorithm we just performed. Now, let's compare this with ensemble methods. Ensemble methods can help us build better classification and prediction models by combining multiple weak learners in an attempt to create a strong learner by taking a weighted vote of individual classification or prediction. Okay, so let's see how this can help us. So let's select the ensemble and then random trees drag and drop here. Now let's uh, make sure we're using a standard partition outcome, correct? Type is our output variable. We have all other variables, move them to selected variable. Let's click on next. Okay, in this dialog, you can choose number of big learners. So the default value is 10. Um, you can increment the number, for example, to 20 or 50, whatever you want. This will tell analytic solver data mining to construct 20 different classification trees during the run. Train, one, train each one on different subsets of data and combine the result to get a better classification, okay? So you can increment to number to any number you want. Instead of running one, we're running 20. You can show the weak learner model, you can show the feature importance and click on, uh, I'm gonna increment this to seven because we added seven for classification three, click on next, let's get a summary and finish. Now on this part, how do we run this? So there is this option to execute the green arrow. Let's click on that to run the workflow. And here are the results. So outcomes are available from this multi-stage data mining workflow. So let's look at the results. This is the random tree model. All 20 are presented here. So details of each um, random tree example are available. You can go to PMML model is available to you. Also inputs are available. And then let's go to training and validation confusion matrix. No records were misclassified in the training data set, and let's look at the validation. Now there are only five cases, overall five cases misclassified and resulting in a person error of seven. So as you can see, with just increasing the number of class, uh, wiki learners and using ensemble methods, we improved the results and uh, we got a better performance than a single classification tree. We learn how to work with workflow and compare multiple algorithms.
Any questions so far? Because I want to move on to the next part of our webinar. How do we go beyond Excel? This 842, I just want to spend a few minutes there. So again, we want to share the models with others. And we're going to do this by using a cloud service. So we created this workflow. How do we share the workflow with other people and use it, for example, in a web application or mobile application? And usually this, this applications they you need to have a backend server and we are providing the backend server for you so we are offering you a cloud service that does that for you so how do we use it click on deploy model let's click on cloud service and click on raise on model so this workflow will be translated uh, to json syntax okay and will be posted to your account, just like that PMML model that I showed you. So it will be promoted to run on cloud. And also uh, uh, it will be called a decision flow, okay, from there. Let's click on raise on model, give it a name, wine 62222, click on save. Few minutes, few seconds actually. You can see that raison.com opens up. Now we have a copy of what is sitting in the cloud. This decision flow is now promoted. It is posted to Raison server under your account. We see a copy of it on raison.com model editor, just similar to the diagram we saw in Excel. Now, remember I mentioned to this is happening in JSON syntax. So let me see how you can see actual code behind this. We have done everything for you. So this one, if you click on this button, it actually shows you the code for this model that has been automatically done for you. So the whole model is translated to JSON syntax and all the code is available for you here. Okay, so ensemble method, and then you can again switch back and forth and go back to the decision flow editor you can create your own decision flows but once you start from excel with a workflow it actually creates the decision flow for you you are not limited to data mining you can actually uh, use the results of data mining in an optimization or simulation or worse versa and create your multi-stage decision flow applications okay so uh how do we run this? How do we get the results here? Okay, so model is sitting on X, uh, on uh, Raison server. Raison server has the capability to run the models and give us the result back. So how do we do that? There are model execution options available here on the top. So let's click on post, and then you can uh, let me uh, remove my highlights. Post solve, okay, to solve this decision flow. So down here you can see get a copy of what is happening. We are communicating with a, a server, get HTTPS, raison.net, and here are the results available. Results are available in two formats for you. One is called OData and one is uh, JSON, okay? So here is the result for all the 20 different Wikilearer models. And it shows the results in the format OData format. However, let me show you, point to this button. Again, you can see the results in JSON syntax. Okay, here are the results in JSON syntax. Or go back to all data results. So choose all data results, then or see the JSON. And we are getting a copy of everything from server. So I'm running the model and requesting the results to be placed here. So here is, you can see that what is the, we are, I'm executing a all data query to the server and getting the results here. And you can see that it sends the get HTTPS raison.net, all data results, and pass the name of the model, okay? And then tells us it's loaded. So you can always look at the output section to see what is happening. Okay, from here, you have the option of creating a web application. So uh, click on create app. So let's go back to the model. You can click on create app, web page. We have an example here for you to be, uh, to allow you to create a web page for yourself. So click on that. And you can see that it downloads this Raison script, a single standalone web page called Raison script number 47. 
it's the HTML page. So let's click on that. And you can see that it has the model. The template is shipped with our products. So you can, you can actually access the template. Uh, on the top, you can see that this is where the Raison server is. This web application can be basis of your web or mobile application. We created this for you to see how to work with our products. Have an example of creating a web application. So we have the Razor model. You can upload a model here. Data file, for example, we can choose our Wine data set. This is the model section, okay? Exactly what we saw before. We can remove a standalone because this is a workflow or the decision flow. And then you have different endpoints. You can communicate with the server. For example, click on solve and solve the results and get the results back here. Okay. And you post the results here. And uh, here are the results. Partitioning outcomes and everything we can actually you can zoom in or zoom out and you can also cre clear the message. Now, another option for you is to, to right click, view page source, and you can look at the code. We have HTML for edit fields and buttons, and then you have JavaScript to run the flow, but making by making REST API calls on Raison server, where we pass the flow. And then we have examples for you to talking about each of the endpoints, for example, here, demonstrating how mother is being solved, that we're getting a status update, and uh, different comments to help you use, uh, like how to clean when you're done and much more, okay? So this, everything you need to run the entire data mining decision flow is on this single page. Now you or your web developer could easily create a web or mobile application to start from this web page, okay? So we started from Excel, we built a model, created a, a workflow, we promoted that workflow, to our Raison Cloud service and created the decision flow. And uh, we also were able to go beyond Raison and Excel and create a web application. So now it's a good time to go back to our slides for a summary of what we practiced today. So here's what happened. Started from Excel, created a cloud service, posted, promoted the model, Raison language, we have a decision flow sitting on Raison server. It's an Azure hosted platform. We saw a copy of it here. We were able to communicate with Raison server, solve the model, get the result back on O in O data and JSON formats. Now the bigger picture is a model that's sitting on Raison server can easily be accessed from different clients, a mobile application, power apps, power BI. And we showed you one example, a web application that can directly communicate with Raison server and the model was created from the model we created, okay? Start from Excel, we, created, we promoted our model to sit on Raison server and we used it and created a web application. So model is promoted, sits on Raison cloud service and then uh, it is easily available to other people and uh, you can create uh, amazing applications. So let's continue. We are using analytic solver for creating testing analytic models. It works in cloud and desktop versions. And remember, it is not limited to forecasting data when it takes mining and machine learning. You can use it for Monte Carlo simulation, risk analysis, larger scale conventional and stochastic optimization. And we also have DMN field compatible rules and decision tables. You can use Raison for deploying, managing and governing your analytic models. And uh, results are available in JSON and OData. And you can create this multi-stage flows of rules, predictive and prescriptive steps. This is an example of a multi-stage decision flow with automatic scheduling, an advanced application that created in Raison. And today, how you saw that actually from starting from Excel, it automatically uh, created this decision flow for us, given that we had the workflow in Excel. So feel free to explore Raison and Analytic Solver.
So the beauty of automatic scheduling is, for example, you want your users to be able to get the results no later than a week or a month or run the results on a monthly basis. So we have a question about this. This is uh, totally, uh, this is capable of doing this. So you can actually do that. Okay, you run the model uh, set that you want to run it every month and send the updated results. Okay, all available in Raison. So feel free, reach out to us. I have my email address here for you, consulting at solver.com. You can use the live chat. You can connect, use this phone number or contact us at consulting at solver.com. We have also consulting services available. But if you have questions, feel free to reach out. If you're an existing customer, we have the customer support team, the customer success team available, making sure our customers are successful using our products. So please feel free to reach out and we are here to support you if you have questions about analytics solver and reason. Okay, thank you so much. I'm gonna spend a few minutes uh, for your questions. Feel free to download Analytics Solver Plus Raison product brief, the handout available to you uh, good in good webinar task screen in the right side. Okay, let's go back to questions. So, Hansi, the, the, to answer your question, yes, it is totally uh, able to solving on a monthly basis. So these the parameters are discussed in Raison uh, website. So let me actually go to Raison.com. So if you go to Raison.com, you can see that Raison stands for RESTful Analytics Solver Object Notation. You can log in and then you can go to Help page and you can download the Raison user guide and Raison reference guide, both of them available here. And also the, it has a Raison Analytics API help also available to you here. So I think the parameters of uh, automatic scheduling all discussed. Any other questions? And then Hansi, feel free to email consulting at solver.com if you are further or you want to discuss this offline, I, I can give you more information. Thank, I said your name right, Hasni. Awesome, thank you. Great. Going once, going twice, Thank you very much, everyone. I really enjoyed presenting this webinar. I trust it was helpful to you. Please provide us with your valuable feedback and insight. You will receive a survey. Even, uh, in it, I think by tomorrow, I will post a copy of uh, this recorded uh, to the good YouTube video channel, okay? And you will receive a link to it. Have a wonderful rest of the day and bye for now.